a 2.4 liter four banger from a Toyota Camry. What moves you? Hello, new voice. Yes, I am Ben Wright. I am the regular car reviews intern. You're going to hear a little bit more from me, so here's my first episode. Please be gentle. When I was in high school, there was an English teacher we'll call Miss Teresa. Miss Teresa was the young, attractive, laid-back teacher that all the popular kids were friends with. In other words, they were hoping they'd be the victim of the next student-teacher affair. Anyway, because I was a nerd, I was not friends with Miss Teresa. However, I was one of the first kids to arrive to school each day, which meant I saw a lot of teachers pulling into the parking lot. There was my honors physics teacher in his late 90s Camry, the vice principal with his brand new, likely leased Ford Expedition, and Miss Teresa, the cool teacher, in her Scion TC. Miss Teresa was a nice woman who I figured merely tolerated most of her posse of adolescent high schoolers who couldn't tell you the definition of the word adolescent despite believing they're mature enough to have unprotected sex. But seeing her step out of a D-badge TC, she might as well have been parking in the student lot sneaking last-minute cigarettes with her friends in their second-hand beaters. The first-generation Scion TC is powered by a Toyota, 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 2AZFE, making 161 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs, and it's built on the same chassis as Toyota's European division's Avensis sedan, because nothing says youth like a mid-sized saloon. In America, however, the Scion TC is a civic soul trapped in a Corolla's body. With as many rice options available as a Chinatown corner store, it's no wonder that it attracted more cool story, babe, now make me a sandwich, bros, than the girl at senior week who goes nowhere without her water bottle filled with pinnacle whipped. Listen, if the TC had released in 2014, its list of standard equipment would have included a vape holster. Speaking of standard equipment, the first generation TC comes with such fine luxuries as... 17-inch alloys, auto power windows, power locks, power mirrors, power steering, ABS on four-wheel discs, nine airbags, including a driver knee airbag, cruise control, AC, keyless entry, side mirror turn signals, a panoramic moonroof, a seven-speaker 160-watt Pioneer stereo with CD player and satellite radio, and something they didn't advertise because it should come standard with every car, its own fuse puller. And hey, no traction control. Factory options? None. Because if you aren't familiar with Scion's sales model called Pure Price that lies at the center of their millennial targeting strategy, allow me to fill you in. See, each model has one price, and that's what you pay. Whether it was advertised on TV, seen at the dealership, or heard from your weed dealer, the number was the same. You pick the color and transmission, either 4-speed auto or 5-speed manual, and any additional options are available from the dealership. And there were plenty to choose from. That's why you may remember Scion advertisements sounding like a supportive mother. You're unique, you're special, but every new model you saw on the road looked the same, because you are unique, just like the rest of us. As far as attracting younger buyers, this model worked. In 2016, Toyota reported that the average Scion buyer is 36 years old, and the average buyer of the TC specifically is 29. But old man Toyota couldn't keep it up long enough because those statistics were actually reported in the announcement that the Scion brand was being discontinued, with select models such as the Monster IA two. and FRS transitioning to the Toyota lineup. Scion was Toyota's little blue pill, making it feel young and spry, but only long enough to get the job done. If your youth-branded mark should last longer than four model years, contact your physician. So this TC, does it have any of those aftermarket dealership options? Yes. A turd catback exhaust, cargo net, and mud flaps all installed by the owner. Other than those dealership options, these eBay fog lamps, rain guards, rota wheels, and this metal paint match trunk lid handle fascia thing because the factory ones break after as many lifts as me on my first day at the gym. And how does it handle? Like missionary with a chubby girl, the TC is comfortable and predictable. It corners flat and the steering is precise, but start getting freaky and you're soon reminded that the car weighs 3,000 pounds. The automatic transmission shifts. It's not the worst, but I would rather have the manual. Here's the thing. Despite what Scion may have you believe, it's a regular car. Like an elderly neighbor trying to hook you up with their granddaughter, Scion marketed the TC as hip and fun and perfect for you, you young go-getter you. But buying a new car when you just landed your first big boy job may not be as good an idea as it seems, because you still have thousands in student loan debt and Dolores' granddaughter has abandonment issues. 
The owner of this TC said he'd read somewhere, probably a forum, that TC stands for Toyota Celica. While that simply isn't true, it's not difficult to imagine it as a sort of spiritual successor. Look at it. A sporty front-engine, front-wheel drive, two-door liftback making enough power to be chuckable while still sipping on gas when not being romped on. In fact, the seventh-generation Toyota Celica was designed and launched during Toyota's Project Genesis, their first attempt to attract younger consumers, which failed, but was probably more effective than the alternative, writing free candy on the side of a Sienna. Of course, the TC didn't have the same legacy to live up to as the Celica, so it didn't try as hard. It wasn't as fast-looking and wasn't advertised for its performance. Like any millennial, it had to try without looking like it was trying. Viral marketing and a unique sales approach made it the best-selling Scion model. But the connection is still worth noting, because they're both good cars that get a lot of undeserved hate. The 7th generation Celica is fun to rag on because it's not what the Celica used to be. The TC is fun to hate mostly because of the people that typically drive them. And that's not fair, because you're not judging these cars for what they are. You're judging their context. The owner of this TC doesn't reflect the TC owner's stereotype. He loves his car for what it is. And you know what? So should we. Thank you.